So in this recording, I want to just have a, a look at a keying in a road file directly into Trimble Access. So we've got a road design here. Um, we've got long sections. We've got our road cross sections. Um, we've got more cross sections here. And then we've got a road setting out information here. So in this setting out information, the main thing that we're given is basically the change, the easting and northing of the key points. We're giving it reg regular changes. But most critically, we're giving it the, the changes of geometry. So we can see we've got IPs, we've got tangent points, um, we've got starts of curves and so on. And then we're given left and right channels, but I'm not so concerned with these. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll look at road number one. I'm just interested in chain adjusting northern level and curve. And we're given a bit of redundancy so we can check where the, the chain we can check whether the changes tie up with the coordinates. So inside Trimble Access, I'm showing you in Access 2020. Um, it's virtually the same inside Access uh, 2017 and before. So first of all, I need to have the roading app open. To, to open the roading app, I'm just going to the, the burger button and I'm choosing roads. I next can just go into define a road and I'm going to define a Trimble road. And I'm just going to give it a name, road one. I'm not copying in any existing roads. And here I'm going to put in uh, end changes. And I'm going to use um, the clothoid spiral vertical VPI. Uh, so we're going to use start and end points for the vertical geometry. Um, and we can accept it there. So we start with a horizontal alignment. And I'm going to start and change it zero as dictated here. And the first thing I'm going to do is enter these coordinates. Now, obviously, we could use Trimble Business Center for this. Um, this uh, video is focusing on just going directly into Trimble Access. So it's the sort of thing that uh, an engineer can do in the field. So we're just putting in that, and I can see the change intervals are reported at 10 meters. All of this does is when we report the road, this is how frequently the road will be reported in the uh, in the export. So what we need here is an azimuth. Now, what we can do is I've actually keyed in to the Trimble Access job, the coordinate at uh, 10 meters and 15 meters. So we can just go into the line. I can choose the azimuth. I can choose calculator azimuth between two points and it's actually between that point and that point and that gives us our starting uh, azimuth for the road so we choose accept and we can see if we type in 10 meter change here i can compare the coordinates we've got here to the coordinates we've got here and i can store that and we can actually see that the road continues straight up until change 15 so i can actually just carry on it's going to hold it uh, tangential and I can type in 15.485. And once again, I can compare what the coordinates are saying. And we can see that we're in within one millimeter store. And now we can see that we have the tangent point. So we get the start of the curve. Um, and we can see that uh, the tangent point is 15.485 with a curved, radi curved radius of 28.4. There's no direction shown. But if we zoom out, we can see clearly that it's a, a right hand curve. So we can just go back to the table. Just place it so I can see both windows together. And we've got this time it's going to be an arc. It's going to be, we'll use radius and end station. Um, the azimuth is going to be um, tangential. So we just choose restore tangency. It shouldn't have actually dropped out there. The radius is 24.2. The end change. So we can see that this carries on till 23.634 change. So 23.634. And once again, we can compare the coordinates here to what we're calculating over here. So 23.634. And it's not, sorry, it's a left hand 
radius that we have, not a right hand radius. So we can see here 26, 244, and 290. We hit store once again, and then we've got another line section. So we can see that we've got a straight section, and it continues all the way through till so tangent points 23, 634, and it continues through till change uh, 31359. So we type in that. So I'm just concentrating on the key changes of geometry, and I'm comparing all the time that when I put in my azimuth, which I'm maintaining tangency all the time, and my changes that it's calculating the eastings and the northern correctly. So we can see here again, 851634. Again, it's within a millimeter. So we can just carry on. I'll pause the video and I'll go on and store the whole road. So we've keyed in the, that entire road, just focusing on the changes of geometry. I'm not regularly report, I'm not keying in every 10 meters um, as it's reported here. Um, we can report to that ourselves later on if we want to. Um, but you can see when we get to the end of the road, um, we can see that it ends in 192718. And the end easting is actually um, 13 mil different. And the end northing is actually um, nine millimeters different. So obviously we're extrapolating constantly and there's some suspicious rounding in the curves radiuses here. And we can see once again here, um, all of these are to the nearest decimal point, but it could be that just some simple rounding at this, on one of the first sections can just accumulate and it's it's fairly easy to build up 10 mil. We could go back and we could, if need be, we could edit um, the azimuths here and tweak it a little bit to try and uh, to try and maintain try and uh, so we don't have this uh, 10 mil um, error. But I'm just going to accept it at this stage. So once we've got our horizontal alignment in, um, we can move across and put the vertical alignment in. Um, so we can just look at our road uh, cross section or long section rather. And we can just have a wee look here and we can see that we have our chainage on our center line here. So it starts at the chainage zero and we can see that this has got a level of 28.667. So we can go to our vertical alignment. We can choose to add an element. It's going to be chainage and 28.667. And then this particular road is actually not the best example. So we can see that it's basically just a straight grade all the way through the road. So we can see that it carries on all the way through till the end where we've got chainage uh, 1926. 192.718. So we can just go to 192.718. And the elevation is 30.672. 30.672. Is that right? 674, sorry. So let's just go back and change that. 674. And we can see that it calculates that this slope is going to be 1 in 96.023. And we should see that, that again, maybe there's just some rounding, 1 in 95.907. Maybe it's just a, a small rounding um, error. So we can just go into the access store. And we can actually do some reports on this later on. So we can just go back and we can close out of the vertical geometry. So once we've got the horizontal and vertical geometry in, we can put our templates in. So these are your standard cross sections or they're actually the standard half cross sections. Now, typically I would just call one um, down I'm not going to copy one, I'm going to create them from scratch. And I want to define um, what your standard uh, uh, half section is. So if I just go across to my road sections. So 
this is obviously change uh, zero or 0 0.1. I'm just going to carry away from the well mouth to actually get onto the road itself. So this is change 10.0. And we can see this is a road center line. And then we've got the width and the differences in height. So we can see here that the road is going down on this side. So I'm going to go back to my template and we create a new element. I'll call this one uh, CH for channel. And I'm going to say that this is going to be a delta elevation and offset. And I can see that the delta elevation, if I really want to use a calculator, I can use a calculator. And I can say this is 28.769 and enter that. So that's this value here. And then 28.741 minus enter. So we can see that it's a 28 mil drop. So we're just going to accept that. And it's actually down, not up. And then the offset you can see is 2.75. Um, and then we just store that and then we can add our new element and here we've got the offset so we can just choose delta elevation and offset so the offset here is 2.762 and the delta elevation is um, 1.0.125 And the offset is wrong. Sorry, the offset is obviously the difference in the offsets. So that's 0 0.012. 125 mil curb up, curb up stand with a 12 mil offset. And we can just choose store there. So we can see here our road half cross section there. So we can just accept that. And then what I'm going to do is add another one and I'm going to call this one up and I'm going to copy it from the current one, which is down and I'm just going to edit it and I'm going to edit this element to go up the way. So we've got one template going up 28 mil and the other one going down 28 mil. So there's a little bit of rounding here. So this is actually, um, this is actually 27 mil. Um, but that's close enough. So we just accept these two half cross, cross sections and then we can apply them at our various changes. So we go to our template positions. At the moment, I'm just going to start change uh, 10.1. Uh, 10 so at change 10.1, we can see the road on the left hand side goes up and the road on the right hand side goes down. So start change 10.1 left up right goes down store and we just want to check that that's all the way correct all the way through so there's a little bit of rounding going on here so it's 25 mil here as opposed to 27 but it looks to be fairly consistent all the way through but we can check that. So if I'm just going to accept that just now. And I can just say that's going to be fine all the way through the road. Accept. Accept. And we can accept the template. And we're going to interpolate it by elevation. And at this point, what we can do is just do a report. And what it will do is generate a report at the change interval that we specified at the very start when we were keying in the road. And now what we can do is we can compare these road cross section values here, um, right the way through every element to what's in the drawing. So it's a good way to make sure whatever you've keyed in is actually lining up to whatever is in the drawing. So we've got a full report in here in the road setting out information, left hand channel, right hand channel. So obviously this is checked to make sure it all corresponds. So with that, we'll just stop the video.
and it's just been a quick run through and how to key in a road inside Trimble Access. So of course the other thing that can be done within uh, Trimble Access um, in the 2020 version um, is we can, once we've keyed in our road, we can escape out of it and we actually see it in the 3D view. So we can see the full road geometry, we can see the direction, we can uh, view it in 3D, so we can just uh, move around, we can zoom in and we can just have a look at that in full 3D. Not a particularly exciting road. Obviously, if we had the footpath in, it would look a lot bit more. Um, there would be more to see. Go back to the plan view, zoom extents. What we can do is we can review it. So we can tap any individual um, string and we can jump and we can actually see and we can click any element and compare it to what it is in the design. And then we can just use the up and down arrows to change the chainage. Or if we want to see a particular chainage, we can just type in chainage here and either pick one from the list or we can pick something completely um, different and it will just show us the road geometry. And then finally, what it will allow us to do is a 3D drive through of that road. So that's a, just a quick in version 20, 20, well, 2018 and onwards, then we can actually review the road inside uh, in the 3D view as well.